all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll take a look on how to build the android image for your high key or high key 960 and popular boards these are all the boards that are officially supported by android uh, in their main in their master branch and you can go ahead and download the source code uh, modify it and build it for yourself so we'll be going through the basic setup now these instructions are on the 96boards.org website as well as android's own website and we'll link it in the description so you can go ahead and take a look uh, and you don't have to type everything manually you can just go ahead and copy paste the commands all right so on the setup side of things you need to be running ubuntu 16.04 anything else is not guaranteed to work even the much more newer 18.04 and as you can see i am not running ubuntu natively it's running on a container it's a lxc container and these instructions are the same for everything whether you are running it in a vm or you are running it in a container or you are natively running it as your main os with that said uh, there are a few hardware minimum requirements that are needed on the processor side of things i'd recommend at least a quad core hyper threaded i7 if nothing else uh, it's it will compile fine on an i3 on a, or an i5 or similar ryzen um, cpus but uh, the build times are going to be very long uh, i have seen up to six hours but we'll just keep it up here uh, as an i7 so at least you can get a good three to two and a half hours at least on your builds on the storage side of things make sure you have at least 150 gigabytes of hard drive space i know it's a lot but you need that free uh, to do at least one build if you are trying to build for multiple devices uh, you would need a lot more storage so yes uh, at least 150 gigabytes that's the minimum requirement on the ram end of things at least 16 gigabytes of ram is required anything less and you would uh, be stuck uh, and the build won't go as smoothly as planned and from here let's just get started with setting up the uh, build environment so the first thing to do is to make sure you have your uh, ubuntu updated uh, your ubuntu repositories updated and then also make sure that you have all the dependencies installed so for that uh, we are going to do a simple apt update or apt get update use the tool you want it's just it's the same thing and once that is done we'll wait for it to finish and then now uh, copy the list of uh, dependencies that we want and again all of this is readily available in our documentation uh, i'd recommend opening that up as well while you are compiling or while you are going through this process so that you can easily uh, cut copy and paste all the commands so of course for me it's already set up uh, but these are all the dependencies you need the next step is to go ahead and download uh, download the repo tool and install it so which is actually extremely easy so first we start with making a bin directory in our home folder uh, we'll add that to the path variable and then download the re repo tools uh, from google which is again a simple curl command and once that is done uh, we need to give it the permission to execute and with the chmod command that is done so now you are ready to download all the aosp source code and let's go ahead and make ourselves a working directory so that means just a folder or your project or your source folder name it whatever you want mkdir and i'll just name it aosp build demo because i'm just making using this for this particular project of course i have other sources set up so we'll cd into that once we are there now we can issue the repo init command and that will lead you to initializing all the necessary android repositories so the android source code is not one single repository it's a collection of many of them uh, that's all you need to know 
for now and that would initialize all of them it, it won't download it it will down the next command will download it but um, this is where we are at with that now if you can see you it shows my identity here again it's public so it's not very not, not an issue that it shows it here but uh, if you don't have this setup it will give you the commands the git config commands to set it up so that might be an extra step on your end now we finally want to sync it uh, so the repo sync command would finally download all of these repository now it's going to take a long time uh, last time i checked it was around 20 to 30 gigabytes of data so yes make sure you're not on a metered connection because that is going to cost you a lot now uh, with that you can actually add j816 or whatever the number of cores you have even sometimes more than a number of cores you have uh, helps a bit uh, so yeah make sure it's at j8 if you're running uh, for quad core hyper threaded or j16 or whatever you want so repo sync um, and press enter otherwise it will take up i think it the it defaults to uh, j4 so once you once you press enter it will start downloading all the source code uh, it will take a while so i'll see you all once that is finished of course you don't have to wait for it All right, so everything is downloaded and it only took an hour or so uh, and it downloaded around uh, 31 gigabytes of source code and then expanded it. Anyways, let's now get to the good stuff, the actual build and start it. So once everything is synced, you need to set up the environment variables and for that there's one simple script. So just execute uh, the script in the build directory and it's called env setup uh, and it will take a couple of seconds and that's done now you can uh, run the lunch command uh, wait for a few minutes uh, this is now taking longer than usual uh, wait for a few minutes and it will give you a bunch of options all right so now that we have the options you can see you have your high key uh, your high key 960 and your poplar so uh, from these just select any one you want uh, i'm going for the high key 960 because that's the board i have in hand right now uh, and just use the number uh, that it's listed on so for high key it would be 27 and this changes over time so it's not going to be uh, the same for you but for now it's 29 for high key 960 let's add that press enter wait for a few more seconds and there you go it should say uh android platform version q and high key 960 and the rest is um the usual stuff there would be few warnings ignore them warnings can easily be ignored it's just errors that you care about now to start the build it's fairly straightforward make and then j uh, your number of cpus you can also do something like nproc so it automatically takes the number of cpus or you can just manually add 8 16 4 or whatever the number is press enter and it should start to compile again this is going to take at least on my machine two and a half hours could be more or could be less uh, depending upon what version of android you are on and depending upon the configuration of your machine so Again, I will see you once all of the build is done. All right, so with the build completed, now all we have to do is go ahead and flash our boards. So for the high key and high key 960, you have to put the boards in fast boot mode. On the high key, you can use the jumper and on the high key 960 there is dip switch number three when you put them in fast boot mode they would show up as fast boot devices for example right here i can add sudo fast boot devices and they'll uh, show up as such
So once that is done, all you need to do is run the installers and there are scripts that you do it. You don't have to manually run the fastboot command. So sudo and then devices linaro hikey uh, installer and then here you can select either the hikey or the hikey 960 so in this case i'll select hikey 960 and depending if you have your uefi bootloader or your uh, older bootloader that's been uh, installed by default uh, then you can use uh, either of the scripts now I have mindset to UEFI but if you've bought this board new and you've never played around with the bootloader then the chances are that you have the older legacy bootloader. So for my, uh, I'll just do the UEFI flash all dot sh but if you have the legacy one uh, it's safe to do the flash all dot sh. So I'll just press enter. Now again if you have the legacy bootloader and you do UEFI flash all dot sh it will install UEFI bootloader onto your board. That's something to keep in mind before you try it out. Once you press enter, it will go through the process of booting and rebooting your board multiple times and it will install the bootloader and the OS on it. So let's just wait for a few seconds for the process to complete. and that is done now all you need to do is remove your device from the fast boot mode by setting switch uh, dip switch number three to off uh, and similar actions on the high key and once that is done your board will now boot to the latest revision of your android or if you've modified the source code it should reflect that as well so that's about it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe uh, and check the links in the description for a written up guide for this process. And we'll see you in another video with another guide or something more interesting. And we'll see you in the next one.